Morning, everybody. Grab a cup of coffee and a donut or three, and let's do some switching. Welcome to part two. If we remember where we left off, uh, we just dropped off the two cars that we picked up from Miller and Union Spring uh, on the passing siding, and now we're going back to get the rest of the train. So the first three cars on the train are going to kill, and the three cars behind it are going to uh, Miller Distribution and General Chemical. So again, this is the first time I've sort of grouped everything together, and I really, if I thought about it, I should have kept the car of Spoke Hill at the end of the train next to the caboose, so I wouldn't have had to uncouple the caboose. So, something I learned. <laughs> Let's see what I'm talking about in just a second. So I'm narrating this on Thursday evening. We had a mid-60s day here in Central Kentucky. Kind of breezy, but uh, very nice. Tomorrow's supposed to be the same. Probably won't post it till Sunday morning uh, before I leave for Alabama. So here's what I'm talking about. I have to leave the caboose here because the three cars I'm leaving in Chalkothy were at the end of the train. I should have put them next to the engine and I could have uh, left the caboose coupled to the cars that are going to Oak Hill. I think I hear a train in the distance. Well, you can't hear it yet. When I was walking the dogs, I heard train after train after train. But, uh... So the white covered hopper, tank car, and the box car are going to stay here on the passing siding. this view it looks like the <laughs> train's going to hit that covered opera but it doesn't but I probably should have pushed it just a little bit farther Going back to get the caboose. I know a lot of you um, subscribe to DJ's trains and he has a lot of valuable prototype information. He talks about the ties that are painted yellow uh, on sidings like that to tell the crew that the car has to be behind that tie in order to have clearance for the other track. So I asked him if uh, that was true in 1980. He said, no, probably not. <laughs> so that's more of a modern thing. So I don't have uh, anything marked, uh, although I probably should do it somehow. That's pretty tight right there. 
Okay, we're heading to Oak Hill. So here's a new view. I uh, screwed a cleat uh, between the uh, LED lights on the fascia and so I can clamp my camera to it. It's sort of like a drum, which didn't exist in 1980. Coming around the curve in Oak Hill, you can see I've started to finish the uh, concrete loading dock for uh, Cedar Heights clay. I'll be working on that model next week in Alabama. So all we have to do in Oak Hill today is switch Cedar Heights. I have to move the camera so you can see the action a little bit better. There is a train going by. Don't know if you'll hear it or not. So there are four cars at Cedar Heights. Uh, we're going to pick up the back three, and we have to respot the box car in front. Oh, I'm sorry, there's three cars at Cedar Heights. We're picking up the last two. The Southern uh, Covered Hopper and the NW Box Car. Spot those on the passing siding.
I'm uncoupling the caboose now because we're going to go back and pick up those cars. So we're keeping the box car next to the engine with us. The cars are already blocked in the correct order uh, before we left the yard. So we just have to um, pick them up and shove them all in. Pretty straightforward. No shuffling today. When I first set up Oak Hill, I set it up fairly simple. So basically, um, I have spot one, spot two, and then another spot for car three and four for covered hoppers. Um, I'll probably go ahead and break all those out. It might mean we have to do some more shuffling later on. Of course, everything is condensed on the model railroad. Uh, down where Cedar Heights is, isn't a real residential area, a low hill. It's a lot farther from Main Street <laughs> in real life than it is uh, on my model railroad. Uh, so there probably wouldn't be a lot of complaints about the train horn down here. You can see the raw edges of the balsa loading dock. Uh, I'm going to face that with concrete block to match the photo that I've shown you. So the dock is balsa that I sealed. I just skim coated it with uh, wood glue. And after I did that, I scribed 16 foot squares into it like it was uh, poured concrete and then painted it with the concrete color and then weathered it with the uh, earth that I actually sifted. All right so when the engine pulls forward here we're going to stop the video. Uh, again if I would go ahead and make up the train going back to Chalcothe the video would be pretty long and I have respect for your time I'm trying to keep it manageable so we'll pick up from here basically in the in part three uh, which I'll post sometime next week when I'm in Alabama so everybody stay safe okay everybody uh, posting this Sunday morning and then I'm driving to Huntsville Alabama and not very far away from Huntsville is Decatur, Alabama. As you can see, Distant Signal did an excellent video there uh, a couple years ago. Um, there's a CSX Norfolk Southern share a lift bridge there. It's a real hot spot. So I'm going to spend a couple hours there, weather permitting, and hopefully I'll see some trains and I'll post a video of that uh, Monday night. Everybody stay safe.